we are uh, back to the spirits book. We started studying the spirits book uh, in, the, the, in the questions and answers part last week. We went over some of the questions starting on chapter one, question one, uh, God and what is God? That is the supreme intelligence, the first cause of all things. And then, so we discussed God and infinity. We discussed a little bit of proofs of God existence. Uh, and uh, we have one question left on proof of God's existence before we move to attributes of the divinity. Okay. So uh, I'm going to ask uh, Philip, you're going to read for us. Okay. Number nine. Where may we see the first cause of all things, a supreme intelligence superior to all other intelligences? There is the proverb that dictates, the worker is known by his or her work. In that case, look at the work and you will find the author. Pride is what creates skeptics. Arrogant human beings want nothing to be above them which is why they are called strong-minded. Pitiful beings, just one breath from God would obliterate them. We evaluate the power of intelligence by its works. As no human being could create that which is produced by nature, the first cause must be superior to humans. Regardless of the wonders accomplished by humankind, Human intelligence itself has a cause, and the greater the results achieved, <laughs> the greater the cause of which it is the effect. It is this supreme intelligence that is the first cause of all things, whatever name humanity may bestow upon it. Okay, so um, we discussed last week that uh, every effect has a cause. And uh, when we look at causes, uh, at, at effects of something that uh, is beyond the ability of humans to, to do, we have to attribute the, the cause to the super, supreme intelligence. Uh, we can call it God. We talked about other names, but uh, we call it, we, we normally call it God here. Um, remember, when we discuss the questions on the Spirit's book, the question is in italic, is asked by Kardec. The answer between uh, quotations is from the Spirits. And the, the, what is not uh, between quotations, it's the comment by Kardec adding to what the Spirits had uh, answer. So what the spirits are telling us here is that uh, because of our pride, we, we think that there is nothing above us. And, uh, and then, you know, it, uh, it, it reminds me um, of a, a passage that uh, a human was facing God and said that uh, uh, reaching the top of the the intelligent uh, intelligence uh, pyramid, according to the human mind, uh, this human said to God, "You know, we can do everything that uh, you do. Uh, we can create uh, life from mud, as you did." And then God says, "Okay, tell me." And then the human said, "So, okay, give me the mud." And then God said, no, you create your own mud. Um, anything that we cannot create, of course, either people say that it was created by chance, the universe, or which makes a lot more sense, it's created by an universal and supreme intelligence what uh, that we call God. So, as we discussed a little bit last week, uh, as we evolve and we advance more intellectually and more morally, we approach 
we get closer to the creator, but still we are very far in terms of both the moral and intellectual evolution. Uh, things that we can create today that would seem a fantasy 100, 200, 500 years ago are now reality. And I'm sure in 200 years, when we look back at uh, our 21st century, we would, think, we would think, how could those people live at, live at those times with so much limitation, like we do with the people that lived in the 18th century, 15th century, and so on. So we continue evolving, and, uh, but the creation that uh, is around us is perfect, and we just have to look outside, have to look at, at the universe that uh, we talked a little bit last week. And, uh, and if, we, if we understand that the universe is an effect, of course, the cause can only be a supreme intelligence or God. Okay, so this is the last of the questions on this um, sub item here. Any comments, questions? Nope. So let's talk a little bit about attributes of the divinity. You are on mute, Philip. <laughs> Is humanity capable of comprehending the essential nature of God? No, human beings lack the sense required to comprehend it. Okay, that's very important because many times we discuss uh, us humans here and, all, and also outside spiritism. How can we understand God? What is the nature of God? What is God? And like Elmo re reminded us last week, a uh, very good definition that uh, Julio used to, to use uh, in our discussions about God. He used to say that God is, because that gives the, the, the complete defini definition of God and God's nature, uh, because God wasn't created, always existed, is eternal, and we are going to discuss this a little bit later and is all powerful and all, uh, all other attributes that we are going to go one by one later or in, on question 13. So we know that as we evolve, we get closer to God. But at this stage, we are not able to understand the essential nature of God. We are far from it. When once we reach perfection or once we become perfected spirits, and then we start working in direct connection with God uh, as true co-creators of the universe, we may understand, I imagine, uh, in the most ample possible way, God. I don't think we will ever fully understand God because that would be uh, God itself. But uh, it's you know it's a supposition, and uh, we we don't really have the ability, and probably not even the words to discuss it. But um, we are we are said to be at at any time co-creators because everything, every action we take makes an effect, uh, has an effect. So. In a sense, we are very small co-creators. Every time you plant a tree, you are co-creating something. So we, we can say that we are uh, co-creators in a very small um, way. But once we reach the perfection or the perfected spirit, when we become uh, Christ-like spirit, we are then truly co-creators with God of the universe. And that's as far as we can understand it, okay? And uh, actually the next question talks, uh, talks a little bit more about this. Number 11? Yeah. Will humans ever be able to understand 
the mystery of divinity. Humans will see and understand God when their spirits are no longer obscured by matter and when they have come closer to striving for perfection. The inferiority of human faculties makes it impossible for human beings to fully grasp the essential nature of God. In the early stages of life, humans often confuse the creator with the creature and attribute the imperfections of the latter to God. As the moral sense of human beings becomes more developed, they are able to penetrate the nature of things more deeply. They will be able to form a truer, more conforming and rational idea of God, even though it will always be incomplete. Okay, so here the spirits and Kardec expand a little bit on this, uh, this uh, understanding of, uh, of the divinity. And the spirits tell us that uh, we will uh, we'll see and understand God better when we are not uh, obscured by matter, meaning we are no longer in need of reincarnation. And we end the, when we are closer to, 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 to perfection or we are uh, becoming perfected spirits. And then Kardec tells us, uh, talks a little bit about our idea of God, and that's important. If we go back to our, us as primitive beings. We had this um, pretty rudimentary idea of God, and because we couldn't really understand, uh, we attributed um, things of, uh, of, of nature to God. So we used to, to say that there was that God was the sun, the moon, the, the thunder. Uh, and as we evolved, of course, uh, we decided that the creator created us as his image and likeness, which is some religions still talk about it. So we started attributing imperfections to God, uh, in human imperfections. So a vindict vindictive God, uh, the God of the Egyptians and the Romans, Jupiter and Zeus, the supreme God with his human passions and, uh, and uh, love and hatred and a lot of, uh, of sons and daughters. Because it, in that way, it became a little bit more relatable to us. We couldn't understand something completely abstract. And we still uh, have a lot of trouble understanding uh, the, 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 the nature of God, the abstract nature of God. <clears throat> and Kardec tells us that even when we evolved, uh, it will always be incomplete, the, our understanding of God, which uh, <clears throat> at the moment we have to take his words because we cannot uh, really understand what's going to happen when we reach uh, the per perfection or the perfected state. But... Uh, what we can say is that our idea and understanding of God is always evolving also. So how we understand God today is not the same way we understood God a thousand years ago. And it's not the same way we are going to understand God in a thousand years from now. Because as we become more evolved, we acquire more ability to understand different aspects of the creator and then uh, to, to amplify our notion and our understanding of the creator of God. Okay, comments, questions? Okay, everybody very quiet today, huh? <laughs> yeah, God is not an easy an easy concept to discuss the, the abstraction of God is not very easy. And uh, I'll repeat what uh, Divaldo said that I said last week, right? That uh, he prays to Jesus because it's something, someone that he can relate. And it's very difficult for him to relate to God with something completely abstract. And uh, so if, that, if Divaldo says that, who are we to think differently, right? But Johnny, 
uh, yes. I, I think we are quiet because your explanation is very good, just that. Uh, uh, and Elmo's God is, is, is just perfect. I mean, any presumption of us to understand anything related to, you know, this guy who, who created three billion, trillion stars. Come on. Beyond anything we can, you are talking about this this one universe, by the way. So I think anything we can presume is, you know, uh, unapplicable, unreasonable. That's why we're not saying anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nothing is a stretch, right? <laughs> hey, thank you. Okay. So let's move on. Let's move on. Twelve. If we cannot comprehend the essential nature of God, can we grasp an idea of some of God's perfections? Yes, some of them. Human beings understand them better as they rise above matter. They catch glimpses of them through thought. Read the next one of the compliments. 13. We say that God is eternal, infinite, unchangeable, immaterial, unique, all-powerful, supremely just and good. Is this not a complete impression of God's attributes? From your point of view, yes, because you think that you sum up everything in those terms. However, you must understand that there are things that transcend the intelligence of even the most intelligent human being, and that your language cannot express. Reason tells you that God must possess all these qualities in the supreme degree, because if one of them were short or not possessed to an infinite degree, the creator would not be superior to everything and everyone, and thus would not be God. To be above all things, God must have no variations and must have no conceivable imperfections. God is eternal. If God had a beginning, it either would have had to spring from nothing or have been created by a being that existed before God. This is how we gradually arrive at the idea of infinity and eternity. God is unchangeable. If God were subject to change, the laws governing the universe would be unstable. God is immaterial. God's nature is completely different from everything that we can call matter. Otherwise, God would not be unchangeable. God would be subject to the transformations of matter. God is unique. If several gods existed, there would be neither unity in the plans of the universe nor power in its organization. God is all powerful because God is unique. Without supreme power, there would be something more powerful than or as powerful as God. The creator would not have created everything and those which God had not created would be the work of another God. God is supremely just and good. The great wisdom of the divine laws is clearly revealed in the smallest and the greatest things. This wisdom makes it impossible to doubt God's justice and goodness. Okay, so the attributes of the divinity, remember, this is the item we are discussing. Uh, the first question Kardec asked the spirits, can, can we grasp some idea of, of God's perfections. And the spirits say, yes, some of them. Uh, as, as we evolve, we understand better. As we rise above matter, the physical uh, existence, we can get, catch glimpses of God's uh, perfections or attributes through uh, our thought. So then Kardec, as in the question starts enumerating uh, God's attributes, eternal, infinite, unchangeable, immaterial, unique, all powerful, supremely just and good. 
And then he asks, is this not a complete impression? And the spirits, again, very directly, from your, our point of view at our stage of evolution, yes, because that's everything that we can understand and grasp at this point in our evolution. However, uh, we must understand that are things that we still do not understand and that some things that our language cannot express. So these are not all of the attributes of the divinity. These are the attributes of the divinity that we can understand and reach at this stage. So then uh, the spirit's complete saying, uh, if you think reasonably, you have to accept that God has all these attributes in the supreme degree, because if God does not have that, into the infinite to an infinite degree, then there'll be something else beyond God. And that would create a complete chaos in all our notions and understanding of the divinity. So then let's go one by one on the attributes of the divinity and comment on them. God is eternal. We discussed that last week. If God had a beginning, there would have to be something before the beginning of God. And that would be unconceivable because then God wouldn't be God if God was created by something or it had a beginning. So God did not have a beginning. It's eternal. It doesn't have a beginning, doesn't have an end. Uh, it's unchangeable. Again, if something is perfect, cannot be changed. If God is perfect, how can God change? If God, like, the, like it says here, if God were subject to change, the laws governing the universe would be unstable. The divine laws or the natural laws, they are all perfect. So they are unchangeable. They are not subject to change because if they were, they were not perfect. We just have to compare to human laws. Human laws evolve as we evolve. You know, uh, you, you have laws that uh, regulate our daily lives here on earth. Each place has it, their own laws, each country, city, states. Uh, but the, the, all those laws are laws decided by us that can be changed and can be erased and can be improved. But the divine laws or the natural laws, they are perfect. Because if they were not perfect, it wouldn't be God's law. Uh, and by being perfect is where we come to the other part that is discussed in the book Genesis, the miracles and predictions according to spiritism. And in Genesis, we learn that there are no such thing as miracle in the way that uh, the word is uh, is understood by the majority because a miracle is a derogation of the natural law, which exists is our inability to explain something. And then we call it miracle. You know, we used to call it miracle, the fire, when the fire, we didn't know how to produce fire. Once we learn how to produce fire, it's no longer a miracle. We, we used to say that uh, to fly from one place to another would be a miracle. And then we start building planes and other uh, flying objects. So it's no longer a miracle. That's very important. The, nat the natural laws are perfect, so they are not subject to change. Uh, God is immaterial. When I talk about uh, the creation, we have God. Remember the pyramid, we have God on top, and then on one side you have uh, the spirit or spiritual principle, and then on the other you have the universal fluid or the cosmic fluid that everything not God and not spirit derives from. All the matter that uh, of the universe, the dark matter, the dark energy, our perispirit, our physical body, everything comes from the universal fluid that, again, 
created by God, but God is not part of it. It's outside of it. Like we spirits are also outside of matter. Our physical body and our spiritual body are matter, but not us spirits, okay? God is unique. It's a concept easy to understand, right? Because if there were more than one God, then there'll be a confusion in the creation. He has to be a God in charge of the creation. Uh, if you start entertaining the possibility of existing more God, then the other att attributes will become more complicated to deal with and all the organization will crumble. Uh, and by being unique, God is all powerful, supreme power, uh, because without it, there, there is a supposition that there will be something that was either as powerful as God or more powerful as God. And then it would be, God wouldn't be perfect if there is something that can be more powerful than God. So that would also be a, a problem for the idea of the creation and the creator. And uh, of course, being perfectly God can only be supremely just and supremely good. And that's another concept that we need to, to get used to evolve in our understanding and notion of God. Uh, we still deal, and we see this a lot still in the Spirit's book that was written in the middle of 19th century, that God punishes us. And we take it literally. Like, you know, we think of God as someone that is there pointing fingers at us and punishing us because of our mistakes. There is no punishment from God. What there is, is the law of cause and effect. The natural law, and every time we deviate from the natural law, we, every time we deviate from the right path, we are going to create consequences for us that we are sometimes called punishments, but the, it's not God punishing us, it's us punishing ourselves by making mistakes, by deviating from the, from the right path. So uh, there is divine justice. Everything that we do creates a consequence, every cause. This is the divine justice. Uh, if we love our brothers and sisters to the fully extent, this love will come back to us. We, we like to talk about the negative side, so let's talk about the positive side. The more you, you spread love, charity in this fullest sense, in the sense that spirit teaches us, without charity there is no salvation, more will come back to us as a natural consequence of the divine law. We know that uh, when we make mistakes, we're going to have to face the consequences of our mistakes. How these consequences are come to us depends on each case, depends our, on our knowledge, our understanding, our evolution. The more you know, the more responsible you are. That's also very important to remember always because we evolve by making mistakes and learning from our mistakes. If we don't know how to, to, to do something, we... To learn, we are going to make mistakes. But the problem, when we create problems for ourselves, like we said many times here, is when we repeat, insist in making those mistakes. Once we do it for the first time, there is no, uh, we don't create consequences for us, uh, serious consequences. We only create consequences when we are uh, making the mistake again knowing what we are doing, having an understanding of what we are doing. And again, knowledge is something that evolves. So very little knowledge, very little consequence. Uh, more knowledge, more consequences. So that's why the spirits say, once you come to spiritism, you learn a lot and there is no escape. You know it. Now we have to deal with it. We have to live with it and we have to... Uh, use it to our advantage as a tool for us to progress, okay? All right, 
questions, comments here. There's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> Paco, you're mute. You were trying to say something. You're mute, Paco. Now. There you go. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I just want to make the comment that prior to all these uh, listing of attributes, Kardec uh, is telling us how uh, limited we are in language and how still we are clothed with matter which is kind of impediments to fully grasp God. And he says itself that it, these attributes are kind of a glance, a glance, a quick look. So we have to be very careful in terms of, you know, those attributes because um, it's still very difficult to, uh, for us to, to uh, digest, I guess, you know, because uh, that's that's what he said prior to listing the, the the attributes. Remember, this is just a quick look, and language is the uh, language is uh, limited, and we're still not at that point. I remember when we started discussing this, and I told, I was asking Elmo, and Elmo clearly indicated well at one point in time you're going to have a fully compre intellectual comprehension of it. I remember that I was two weeks ago, I guess. So I don't remember Elmo. Uh, but my point is that even though those attributes are there, we have to look at them with a uh, kind of uh, carefully. That's my, my point. You know, we cannot really much expand on that because my intellect is just limited. That's all. Uh, that's my, that's my, my comments, you know, like. Yeah, I, I, I think the words here, uh, eternal, unchangeable, immaterial, unique, all powerful, supremely just and good, are the best words that we have available uh, at present. Uh, are they fully uh, definition even of the words themselves? I don't believe so. I think that... Uh, exactly. We are going to evolve. And we discussed a little bit last week when we talked about eternal and infinite, right? The, the yeah. differences between eternal and infinite. And uh, and we had some issues there. So even the words that we use today, they are probably going to evolve and change, right? We know that uh, the words change. And, and and one thing is very important here, if we go back to, to the, what, this, the, what uh, the Spirit tells us here, uh, which which we catch glimpses of the attributes of, of God's exactly. thought. So it's beyond words, right? Exactly. Eventually, we when we go beyond words, because words are used to, to speak, we are going to have a better understanding through thought, which is a direct connection to, uh, to God, right? Um, I... <clears throat> I, I I saw on the on lect on the lecture that Sonia Dr. Sonia Doy gave last uh, last Saturday. She 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 mentioned thought, which I thought it was very interesting because it's something that uh, we sometimes we don't fully understand the, the concept of thought. And she said that thought in itself is neutral. The energy that we it's matter and it's neutral. The energy we put behind the thought is what the vibration is what gives it a positive or a negative uh, carry, <laughs> let's say. And, and I, I, you know, it's something that uh, it, it called my attention because that's very true, right? Um, we, we, the first thought that comes, that's how we are going to understand the difference between for, uh, and the inability to forget something. Uh, so we say, I'll never forgive, I'll never forget. Well, you will never forget, but eventually you have to forgive. And when you forgive, the thought, which is you don't forget, won't come out with a negative energy anymore. So that's when you truly forgave and the thought can come without affecting you. And that's what, when we, when people ask about remembering uh, 
past incarnations. And I, I normally say we will remember when we are ready to deal with the recollections of previous incarnations. That's exactly the, exactly the same thing, right? Um, we deviated here completely from God, but uh, I thought it was when I when you, we mentioned thought here, I thought it was import, important again to to bring the idea of thought again as as something that as we evolve, we and we become less dependent on words, we are going to connect, get closer to God in that sense. Okay. Anyone else? Elmo, anything to say here? Yeah, I think the important thing is to remember that these are attributes, characteristics, as Kardec says in the, in the book Genesis, in order to be God, in order to, to be this creator of all things, it must have these kind of characteristics and name some of them. These are not definition of God. We are unable to define something that we don't know. Yeah, these are attributes. Right. Of the divinity, yes. May I okay. ask a question, yes. John? Um, sure, yes, Carol. on um, item number three, God is immaterial. Uh, I, I'm going to have to research that a bit. I, I, I'm not so comfortable with that I, I i don't know not that i disagree with it but um if we are co-creators um god has to have some part of of physicality not god itself but i i the word immaterial doesn't really work for me i i, I have to research that or think about that a bit more that's um. my question so yeah, ask... I'm, abs I'm absolutely fine with that, Carol. I think okay. it's important for us to, to question and discuss. Uh, the, the, I think the, the, the word immaterial here is used in the sense that it doesn't belong to the side of the creation that uh, produces matter that comes from the universal co fluid, the cosmic fluid or the universal fluid. So that's the sense that they're using immaterial here. But, uh, but I understand your your uh, concerns here with the word, yeah, because we yeah. our understanding of the word is not exactly what uh, yeah. what we say here about the attribute. Right, yeah. okay, thank you, that helps. Yeah. Thank you, appreciate it. Elmo, anything here? No? Yeah, I'm gonna ask uh, Carol if she is comfortable if we say the spirit is immaterial. Oh, that that would be preferable. I could go. I could concur. I could I could go there. I think also the word immaterial also could have a slightly negative connotation, like um, you know if you if you're doing a project and somebody adds um, superfluous details, somebody would say, oh, that's just immaterial. That that's yeah. like meaningless. So that's why I'm questioning the word immaterial. Not that I know better, but. Um, I'm uncomfortable with that word, mm. but I like the what you said, Alma. Spirit is, you know, non-matter. Yeah, and uh, what 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 would you call which does not does not belong to matter? <laughs> yeah, because here, if you go to the dictionary, I'm I'm just going to the dictionary. And the first definition is what you said: unimportant under the cir circumstances, irrelevant. And in, it's, to that point, I agree with you that uh, it's, there is a problem with this term. But the second, uh, spiritual rather than physical. It's the other definition on the dictionary, right? Mm, yes. Um, so and the, the, the exam, an example here, we have immaterial souls. Actually, it should be we are immaterial souls. But uh, anyway. <laughs> But uh, the definition is we have, and, and, and I, I, I'm glad you raised this point because it's important. We have to be careful with words and that's what goes back to what Paco was saying, right? The exactly. word immaterial here very has good. two very meanings, good. right? We have to be very careful. I would, I, would, I would be more inclined to say God is non-material. 
And uh, that explanation of Elmo that is outside the, 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 the material doesn't mean that cannot be projected, but it's outside the, the cosmic fluid. That's a very good explanation. Yeah, I I I like that non-material also. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, it is true. Carbon says it's true. You know, we say we tend to say it's material like it's not relevant. It's not really relevant. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, the same way we use spirits for drinks, right? So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and that's here true. when we are talking very, about that's a very so good. Well, that's true. We do that. <laughs> yeah. That is great. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, but uh, but but it's important uh, this this discussion. Uh, thanks, Carol, for bringing it. It's very important. We need to clarify how we use the words here in spiritism. The same way that we said that uh, uh, in spiritism, soul is an incarnated being, and uh, errant spirit or spirit is a spirit in the spiritual world. And you go outside, you see people talking about soul being, um, you know. Uh, this, the, the, after death, we are just a soul and things like that. Yeah. They're not wrong. It's just different definitions. And so in that sense, the word immaterial here means not belonging to the part of the creation that is, that is the fluid, the universal fluid or the cosmic fluid. But um, yeah, great point, Carol. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else here? Any other words that uh, your guys are not comfortable that we can discuss? No, we're fine. Because now we're changing completely the subject. So, so we are going to pantheism, which is something completely different. Um, What's pantheism? Let's see. All right. So let's Number 14? Yeah. Yes. Is God a distinct being, or as some believe, or as some believe? <laughs> yeah, there was some mistake there. <laughs> <laughs> the result of all the forces and intelligences of the universe combined. If it were the former, God would not be God, because the work of creation would be an effect and not the cause. God cannot be both the cause and effect. God exists. You cannot doubt this, and that is a crucial point. Do not try to go beyond it. Do not get lost in a labyrinth from which you will never find an exit. Trying to do further or farther will not make you any better. Instead, it would only increase your pride by causing you to believe that you know something, while in reality, you know nothing. Cast aside all these systems. You have enough to worry about that directly affects you, beginning with yourselves. Study your own imperfections so that you may shed them. This will be far more useful to you than any attempt to penetrate the impenetrable. Sorry, I, I was on mute, no. So um, here, uh, when we talk about uh, pantheism, right? Uh, let's uh, first go to, to the definition of pantheism because it's important if, uh, if uh, someone doesn't know what is pantheism. It's a doctrine that it identifies God with the universe and re or regards the universe as a manifestation of, of God. Or is also worship that admits or tolerates <clears throat> all gods, meaning more than one god. So, what pantheism does is, is to <clears throat> to mix the creator with the creation. Uh, and uh, you are going to see here later that uh, it it brings the notion that we are all part of God, meaning the creation and the. Uh, it's everything together, including God. All forces and intelligence of the universe combined, including God, is everything. And that creates a problem, as the, the, the spirits tell us here, because if it was like this, God would not be God, because you cannot be the creator and the creator. 
creation, cause and effect, you, there is a cause and there is a, an effect. There is a creation and there is a creator, right? And uh, you cannot put them all together because it loses, uh, it loses the sense and it loses the explanation. Once we believe that God exists, then we, we have to discuss it, try to understand, study it. But uh, as the spirits tell us, um, try not to get lost in a, in a labyrinth from which you never find an exit. Uh, it's important here, and uh, I'm going to address a question that was posted here on the chat that uh, says, do we really need to define God? We have no means to do that. I think we, that we have to learn how to feel God without the preoccupation of putting it into words. Um, not really, because when we are studying spiritism, and spiritism is uh, a doctrine that uh, explains our origin, our destiny, and what we are doing here, where do we come from and where we go, we cannot explain all of this without studying God. God is an integral part of this study. Doesn't mean that uh, we are going to fully understand God, but it's something that we need to study and we need to try to get an idea of what is God so we can be comfortable with the work of the creation, creator. Because if we, we do not attempt to, to define and understand God according to our limited uh, knowledge, it's very difficult to discuss the creation and all the consequences of the creation. Where do we come from? Where do we go? Uh, and all these things. So yes, uh, we need to define God and we need to study God. It's a part of, uh, of, of, of the challenge of learning more about ourselves, about uh, our, our, uh, our, us being an eternal beings. Okay. Elmo, some help here. I think it is exactly through, through the exercise of trying to comprehend God that we reach the conclusion that God at this level for us is it's not, you are not able to comprehend yet. But you can only reach that conclusion after you try to do it. It is innate in us as human beings to have the curiosity to, to, to know things, to understand things, to define or to conceptualize things. And you want to have kids? No, it's innate. On a young child wants, what is this? Out of pure human need to know things, to understand things. So we will go through, through the exercise of trying to understand God, to try to give a, a concept of God and later try to get a definition of God. And eventually through this exercise, we come to the conclusion, no, it's way beyond our ability to do it. So I think as Ron said, it's important for us to try to understand everything, including God. But it's very important to be humbled, to understand our limitations. And you won't understand the limitations when you reach it. Luis? Uh, yes, well, I was going to say something else, but just I totally agree with Elmo. I think this is a, a conceptual matter. And, and what Kardec tries to do is to, to teach us concepts using the world the word, sorry, the logic that he has at hand, that's our ability. So the conceptual part is important in understanding that we cannot go beyond a certain point is part of understanding this particular concept. But Johnny, uh, just, I think you, you, you guys are, uh, English, English is your first language, uh, some of you who are there, uh, uh, but, in my opinion, I was just checking here, the French and the and one of Brazilian translation. This translation is, is not good. The, the first paragraph of the, the answer is not correct. Question is, 
is God a distinct being? Or as some believe, or as some believe, the result of all the forces and intelligence. That's the, the second affirmation. Is it the first or the second? And the paragraph say, if it were the former, I think it, the correct uh, a phrase here is, if it were the later or latter. If, the latter, or, or if it's, you know, uh, the, 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 the French yeah, original. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a, that, that is a mistake, definitely. Yeah. It's not the former, okay. yeah. It maybe take Good a catch. note there for, for making a yeah. correction in the next edition. Yeah, yeah, it's the la if it were the latter, oh, yes, good. absolutely. And if yeah. I were to translate from the French, I would say, not if it were the former or the latter, but if it were such as that, that's very close to the original French. Sorry. Yeah, si le te, si le, si le te en si. Yeah, yeah si le te en si, si fosse yeah. if, if, yeah. if it were like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good, thanks. I'll make a note of this that because we are going to publish a revision very soon. So it's important to catch it. So like we need to catch here the, the repetition on the question that is like the, the same same words here. Oh, to to take that out I, before I read it, I crossed out one of them on my book. I still read it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the first one is a typo. Or yeah. the, the repetition, but the second one is is a, is a meaningful. A mistake. So it's it's dangerous. Yeah, it's a it's a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. What uh, specifically? Where are we talking about? So I could correct it in my book. Uh, the the or, beginning of the answer yeah. fourteen. Okay. Uh, when you see there. If it was, if it were the latter, not the former, that's the correct translation. The latter, okay. okay. Israel. Yes, Renato. Uh, this is uh, for you and Elmo. I'm curious as well. Uh, it's kind of a personal. If you don't want to ask, that's okay. If you don't want to answer, that's fine. Um, you know, we've been studying God in these questions, you know, for you even more than me for a while now. And uh, I, I, I'm quite because I'm kind of a, I take the humility route and understanding that, you know, I, I already find my my fair share of questions on this subject so I'm kind of <laughs> just taking it whatever new i feel it but at what point you guys kind of okay you know we're studying here but myself you know me juan or emma whatever i i i don't question anymore i don't try to understand anymore because i understand that this level already have enough to to go forward to move forward, um, I I think it's a it's a personal uh, a personal decision, and that that my in my my opinion it has to be at a point when you are wh where you are wasting your time and not gaining any no more knowledge, so you are running circles. What's that point? It varies for each person is different, but. Uh, when the spirit uh, says here, you have enough to worry about that di that directly affects you, beginning with yourselves, study your own imperfections and all that. So what the spirits are saying to us here is, don't try to go beyond your abilities to understand. Reach a point that you are comfortable with. Uh, of course, don't put it aside and forget about it. We keep coming back and we are back here studying the spirit's book for the uh, seventh time, I think. And uh, we go and discuss again, but next time we discuss this, we may have different, uh, a better understanding of, uh, of God and may uh, come with the new uh, definitions and attributes or whatever that moves us 
further. But uh, what what the spirits are telling us here, and what I, you know, that's my idea is, uh, let's not try to go beyond our abilities because then we start start running circles. Elmo, anything on your side? No, I think you said everything. The thing is, what is my limit? What is what is, is my max of my ability? Do I know when I reach it? If I have the, the, the ability to know it and harmonize, yes, I reach it. But let's use our own example. This is like the seventh time that we studied this question, right? I am sure that anyone is being with us throughout those years, our ability, the limit of our ability is much greater today than it was when the first time they studied this book. So I think it is important to revisit those, those questions from time to time because we have matured, we have gained knowledge, you have gained experiences, and we are able to expand the limitation of our abilities. So just put things aside and let it go. I, th I think we missed the opportunity to revisit those topics. And now with a more experienced, with more knowledge, perhaps we understand things a little bit more, we will be able to add a little bit more to those topics. Yeah. Um, and, and, and a proof that we have, Elmo, is that uh, it takes us, now it takes us longer to go through the questions and to go to the book than it took in the beginning, because um, when you don't really have a, a lot of a knowledge and understanding, you have less to, to question and less to comment, right? And That's as right. you have more knowledge and more understanding, you are doubting things and questioning things and uh, pondering about things more than you were doing uh, previously. Yeah, you have to know a little bit at least to be able to question. And when you question one of those questions, and then you know a little bit more and you have more questions and more questions. And, and that's the beauty of studying this book repeated times and people think it's just saying, but it's not saying, it's almost like you're reading this for the first time because we are different. We had gained a lot in terms of experience and the Elmo and Rom is not the same guy of the first time that I studied this book seven years ago, which would be what? 15, 15 years? 20 years ago. So 20 like years that. ago, look, look behind me. 20th <laughs> anniversary, come on April 11. Yeah. Mm, 20 years? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, because okay. um, we've been we've been studying the spirits book since the beginning. Because uh, um, I um, I remember something that we study. I don't I don't know I don't know how long ago, but I remember uh, you guys telling me that um, sometimes you don't have to fully understand something to take advantage of it. And uh, there's things in our life that we don't even question, and then we use it. And how you use is more important to, to understand it. That's true. And like you know, like TV, like our cell phones, like a lot of stuff that we don't question, like we question God. We just <laughs> use it, and you know, some people use for good things, some people use for the bad thing, as you always say, the life, and so forth. So many examples throughout the years. So. Um, so the, the point that I was trying to uh, share that I reached was like, you know, I like to study here and every time we study, we get a little bit more, but I'm feel comfortable that the idea of God and what do I do with that knowledge is more important to me than trying to understand fully God, because I know this is a matter of time and once we get to perfect the spirit, even though that, you know, I think it, it won't matter. <laughs> we won't try to understand God because we will understand that it doesn't matter because there's, uh, uh, we will be part of something so, so greater than try to understand something that it won't 
take us anywhere. So that's why I was asking you guys, um, how do you, you know, you feel like, I mean, I have enough and then with this information, I can move on and work in different areas so I can better myself towards uh, perfection. It's, it's a personal decision, but you know, I, the point that you made about, uh, you know, uh, us uh, in the, uh, not trying to understand God any longer reminds me of the concept of a charity that I heard also from uh, Cesar Hayes uh, that I always carried with me, right? That at this point of our evolution, charity is an effort. We, you know, if we ask each one of us how many times we did charity today, you, you will have an answer. One, two, zero, three, five. Uh, when charity becomes part of who you are, you don't answer any, you don't know the answer anymore because it's who you are. And I think it, the same will happen with God. When God becomes fully integrated in ourselves, in our comprehension, uh, you know, God is inside of all of, all of us, but uh, we will need less to try to understand God and more be a part of it. Thanks okay. for, for sharing. Thanks. Thanks, Anato, for the question. Okay, it's at 7.32. We have to stop here. Um, just uh, a reminder for this Saturday, we, we have uh, our good friend, um, Alvaro Mordecai, giving the lecture, the, the, the lecture for the US Spiritist Federation. And uh, he's going to talk about the importance of Paul's letters in current days, okay? Uh, Alvaro has been with us here at SGNY, has been with us a couple of times at the USSF. And uh, he's, uh, uh, he was raised in the Jewish tradition. He became an Orthodox Jewish in the early 20s. Later, he found about spiritism because he's a medium and he had uh, profound disturbances with mediumship. That's how he came to spiritism through Haroldo Dutra, because uh, he had a big problem with the concept of Jesus, like many Jews have. But uh, watching a, a, a workshop by Haroldo on, on the book On the Way to the Light that we're going to do on this Sunday at 11 a.m., he fully understood Jesus uh, according to Spiritism. And then he was able to embrace uh, spirit is and now he's a, a worker and a lecturer and he does a lot of uh, work a lot of lectures in spiritism so he's going to be talking to us on this saturday 11 a.m okay and then uh, as i said sunday we are going to have the uh the book on the way to the light um carol can you do our final prayer please sure Infinite creator, supreme intelligence, first cause. We are grateful to be together this evening for our study of the Spirit's book. We are grateful for the knowledge that we have received, those terms, those ideas that we are exploring in depth. We are grateful for the lessons learned. We are grateful for our spiritual benefactors, the good spirits, the mentors, those who are guiding us, those who are inspiring us, those who are helping us to move along the path of life with goodness and grace. We are grateful for the love, the light, and the teachings we have received, and the love and light of Christ that comes to us within. We are co-creators with God in a very small way, as we become perfected spirits, we will have a better understanding of what this means. We are always evolving. We are evolving each day as we learn, as we grow together, as we become a part of something greater. May we be blessed to find this depth of understanding and may we impart what we know with others who may be receptive through our discernment. As we ask and humbly ask to close this meeting tonight, we ask and pray for safety, for guidance and assurance to go to our friends, family, loved ones, and coworkers. May we also ask that our family be blessed, those in our community who are in need of healing, who are in need of reassurance, may they be granted 
that vibration. May the love and light go to them as well. We humbly ask now to close. May we continue throughout the week with our prayers, with our study, and with our mindfulness, for we know that we are truly blessed. We close and remind ourselves that we are beacons of light. May we go forth now in peace. So be it.